assalamu alaikum today we will talk about the drugs for your eye osp okay so in this video we will mainly try to cover midriatics and anti glaucoma drugs along with their mnemonics so uh, one thing that is most important and that you must must remember is that any drop any drug or any drop with red cap is always a midriatic is always a midriatic it doesn't matter that which midriatic is this it can either be atropine home atropine cyclopentolate tropicamide phenylephrine but one thing is that it has a red cap so it is a midriatic okay right you can also see here again you can see here and then uh, number two thing is that any drop any eye drop with green cap is actually a meiotic meiotic means pupil constrictor here you can see that this is pilocarpine this is also a meiotic but the thing is that any any type of uh, meiotic has green cap then uh, most of the anti glaucoma drugs are with black cap okay but all of the anti glaucoma drugs don't have black cap you have to see the thing is that you only don't have to see the cap like if it is not either red it is not green it is not black then don't be confused that i don't know what is this either it is midriatic meiotic or anti glaucoma drug it, its cap can be of any color the thing is that you have to read this uh, formula after that you know you must know that to, to which class these drugs belong if you know this that to which class these drugs belong after that you can tell it clearly okay and you can tell it with confidence that it this particular drug belongs with which group like here bremonidine belongs with alpha 2 agonist and timolol is a beta blocker it is a combination mainly okay and these two things alpha 2 agonist and beta blockers in combination are used in which condition glaucoma okay so uh, uh, first of all uh, let us uh, have a review of midriatics as you all have done with your pharmacology and you must have read these drugs previously in your pharmacology that midriatics include many drugs like atropine home atropine cyclopentolate tropicamide okay phenyl aphrine and scopolamide all of these are midriatics they may ask you uh, they may ask you about the duration of action of these drugs mechanism of action of these drugs indications contraindications side effect so you must know all of these things about each of these uh, drugs as uh, we have listened very much about this atropine drug like in our forensic medical medicine in our pharmacology so it comes in our mind that maybe this is the most commonly used drug for uh, uh, as a midriatic but this is wrong don't consider it as a um, commonly used midriatic yes it is a midriatic but not it is commonly used okay the reason is that its duration of action okay first let me tell you about the duration of action of all of these drugs okay atropine has mainly duration of action of two weeks one to two weeks it means seven to fourteen days mainly as if you use this atropine as a midriatic it will dilate that person's or patient's pupil for seven to fourteen days and it will cause blurring of vision for 7 to 14 days in that particular person if we want to check only the refractive error we want cycloplegic refraction then we shouldn't do this right we shouldn't do this we shouldn't use atropine as a midriatic because it will cause blurring of vision in that particular person for 14 days he or she will not be able to perform his or her daily life activities then comes this home atropine now remember that in home h o m it has three letters right so it duration of action is mainly two to three days okay you can also write approximately three days as it has three letters in it it is just a mnemonic then comes cyclopentolate okay cyclopentolate cyclopentolate starts with cycle as you have seen that children play you know, with their cycle for 24 hours as their children they um, play and play and they play for 24 hours with their cycle so you can remember cyclopentolate duration of action by this cycle word and as children play for 24 hours so its duration of action is also what 24 hours okay then comes this tropicamide remember that this tropicamide contains uh, how much uh, letters tropicamide add h by yourself then how much letters it become 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so tropicamide's duration of action is 6 hours i have added this h by myself to remember its duration of action okay tropicamide 
After that comes the phenyl actin. Its duration of action is three hours. And after that comes the scopolamine. Scopolamine S starts from S, and similarly, um, seven also starts from S. So you can remember scopolamine's duration of action. Uh, as four to seven days, or approximately seven days. You can also remember it roughly as approximately seven days. Okay. Okay. So you can see from here that we have covered this duration of action. I have told you it with mnemonics. After that comes this um, approximate maximal effect. You don't need to do this. If you want to do, then you can. It's on, it's your own choice. After comes this uh, mediatic or cycloplegic. Okay. Among all of these mediatics, only phenylephrine is just a mediatic, but rest of all of these are mediatic or cycloplegic as well. Cycloplegic means that uh, the drug which causes the spasm of the ciliary muscle. Okay, and after that, here is the written that uh, what are the indications and what are the side effects of these drugs? Phenylephrine is as it is. Uh, phenylephrine is what phenylephrine is. A sympathomimetic, okay, like epinephrine, norepinephrine, phenylephrine is a sympathomimetic, and sympathomimetics are vasoconstrictors, so it is also a vasoconstrictor, or we can say that it is a decongestant as it, as it causes vasoconstriction. And phenylephrine and tropicamide, these are mainly used in our clinics or in our OPDs for pupil dilatation if we want to examine the fundus of that patient. Remember it that only these two, and among these two, this tropicamide, okay, this tropicamide is mainly used. If we talk that among these two which is most commonly used then it is tropicamide okay if we talk that among all the mediatics which are mainly used as mediatic in our opd then these are phenylephrine and tropicamide both these are most commonly used after that comes the cyclopentolate cyclopentolate is mainly used for cycloplegic refraction okay cycloplegic refraction as in children we do cycloplegic refraction after that, the cyclopentolate as cyclo starts from C and it is only also used to relieve pain in corneal ulcer. And cyclopentolate as it is a mid dreatic, it means it causes the dilatation of the pupil. Okay, so it is mainly used to prevent or break synechy form, synechy that is formed. And synechy particularly, posterior synechy particularly forms in the case of the uveitis. So atropine and cyclopentolate has somewhat same indications and phenylephrine and tropicamide are somewhat same indications. After that, I written its side effects that all of these are uh, responsible for causing blurry cohesion as phenylephrine is a sympathomimetic. So it is causing additional thing which is hypertension and atropine is anti-muscarinic or parasympatholytic. Atropine, cyclopentolate, tropicamide, scopolamine are all of these are parasympatholytics. And atropine, uh, you are knowing already that atropine causes fever, flushing of face, psychosis, and many other cardiovascular effects as well. So these are side effects. Okay, so after that, uh, we are concerned with the anti-glaucoma drugs. You are knowing already that anti-glaucoma drugs are responsible to reduce the intraocular pressure as intraocular pressure is raised in the glaucoma. So it includes both the topical and systemic drugs as well. The mnemonic to remember is that Pro-CM Pro -CM has done DA, right? Pro-CM has done DA. Mnemonic starts from P, prostaglandins, C, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, M for meiotics, B for beta blockers, A for alpha-2 agonists. Has done, uh, we are not concerned with has done. Okay, Pro-CM has done DA. Okay, Pro-CM ne BA kiya hua, right? Pro-CM has done BA, we are not concerned with has done, has done. There is no mnemonic from has done. P for prostaglandin, C for carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, M for neotics, D for beta blockers, and A for alpha 2 agonist. And you must know two to three drugs belonging from each class prostaglandin, latanoprost, okay, beta blockers include timolol and many other drugs as well. And after that comes the alpha 2 agonist. Alpha 2 agonist mainly have dual action. Dual action, I will tell you, okay, as it it has two in its name it has dual action as well meiotics and after that come these carbonic and hydrase inhibitors we can use all of these as topical drugs okay mechanism of action that you must know is that in the case of particularly in the case of prostaglandin analogs these are mainly responsible for increasing the uveoscleral outflow and rest all okay we have done with the mnemonic pro cm has done ba only 
P has the or prostaglandin and lerox have the mechanism of action of increasing UV scleral outflow. I will tell you that what is the difference between UV scleral outflow and normal outflow. After that uh, comes the beta blockers and either which of these drugs they all are responsible for decreasing the aqueous production right among all the topical drugs but this uh, meiotics i'm sorry these alpha 2 agonists have dual action it means they decrease aqueous production as well as they increase the uvo scleral outflow but meiotics meiotics mainly cause as uh, they are responsible for constriction of the uv they also cause ciliary muscle contraction right they cause ciliary muscle contraction which pulls the scleral spur in order to open the trabecular meshwork right as it opens the trabecular meshwork so it seems that it it is mainly used in the narrow angle glaucoma as its duration as its mechanism of action is to open the angle so it is used in the narrow angle glaucoma mainly and rest are used in mainly open angle glaucoma after that uh, are the systemic drugs among systemic drugs again carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and hyperosmotic agents right hyperosmotic agents include mannitol and it mainly acts as uh, as its name indicated it is hyperosmotic agent it creates an osmotic gradient and it can be used in any type of the glaucoma right after that comes the contraindications okay you can remember contraindications as they have written in front of you and okay so we will cover the remaining portion in the next video thank you very much